Ocular surface disease, meibomian gland dysfunction are very, very common in all practices in ophthalmology. If we look for it, we will see it. Therefore, how do we test for it? How do we help the patients understand that there is something going on with their eyes? Because sometimes these patients are asymptomatic. Tear osmolarity is one of those tests. Tear osmolarity helps measure the osmolarity of the tears and helps us figure out, does this patient have surface disease or not? As eye care providers, we have to train our technicians and empower them to perform this test because tear osmolarity cannot be done once tears or any other medication, eye drops, have been instilled in the patient's eyes. Therefore, by educating our technicians, they become empowered and know when to perform this test. Some patients are asymptomatic, so it's very important to also order this test if you see any type of lid margin disease or staining for a future visit. Tear osmolarity, 300 and below, is considered normal. The higher the number over 300, the more severe the ocular surface disease. Moreover, if there's a discrepancy or interocular difference of eight milliosmoles or more between the two eyes, that also reflects tear film instability. So all of these are points that we can share with our patients. We actually document it on a card that Tear Lab provides for us to give to our patients. This way the patients understand that indeed they do have ocular surface disease. And therefore, we have to implement treatment. On return visits, tear osmolarity is important to monitor whether the treatment regimen is adequate or not. And if one sees a trend of the numbers going down towards 300, then you know the treatment regimen is adequate and working. If you see the numbers going up, then either there's, either there's patient noncompliance for the treatment that you're recommending, they're not using their cyclosporin, they're not using their oral omega-3s or whatever it is that you have recommended, or their disease is still progressing and you need a more aggressive treatment. Therefore, having a concrete objective number helps with a treatment of ocular surface disease and meibomian gland dysfunction through tear osmolarity. The test cards come in individual foil pouches. Basically, you have to open the pouch, get the test card out, and you use one test card per eye per patient. The tip gets mounted on the handpiece and it clicks in. When the light turns green, you take the cap off. This is disposable. And then you put it back into the handpiece and hit OK. And you verify that the handpiece and the number are the same. And then within seconds, the tear osmolarity number is visible to the technician, which is then recorded in the patient's chart. Then you do the same exact thing for the second eye. It does not hurt the patient. And again, no drops can be instilled prior to performing this test. For any instrument to provide accurate numbers on which we rely to decide the type of treatment we're going to initiate for the patient, certain steps have to be followed. With a tear lab device, there are two calibrations that have to be done. One is the monthly calibration per unit. It checks for the high and the low controls. These have to be logged per unit in that specific exam room. The other calibration is the daily calibration that has to be done by the technicians when they open the exam rooms. Both have to be logged, and it is a clinical test. Therefore, at any time, you may need these data for inspectors.